Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, November the 15th. We will be singing a few songs and have a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a message, uh, one uh, that has been in a series of lessons that I've been given, giving, uh, dealing with seven desires of every heart. We are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. And so if you do have a songbook at hand, please turn your books to number 121. One, two, one. We will sing the first and the third verses. 121. Come, let us all unite to sing. God is love. Let heaven and earth their praises bring. God is love. Let every soul from sin awake. Each in his heart sweet music make. And sing with us for Jesus' sake. For God is love. 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 Come, let us all unite to sing that God is love. Oh. Happy is our portion here, God is love. His promises our spirits cheer, God is love. He is our sun and shield by day. Our help, our hope, our strength and stay. He will be with us all the way. Our God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. Let us all unite to sing that God is love. Number 296. 296. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the King Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name 
name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. And number 729. 729. I always remember when I was young singing this song at Thanksgiving. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in Ere the winter storms begin God our Maker doth provide For our wants to be supplied Come to God's own temple, come Raise the song of harvest home. We ourselves are God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield. We then tears together song unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the bull corn to harvest grain that we hold grain and pure may be. And even so, quickly come. Bring thy final harvest home. Gather thou thy people in. Free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in thy Thine angels come, his glorious harvest home. Let's have a prayer together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for uh, just a short amount of time that we can come together and sing praises to your name and uh, just worship you and uh, share uh, with one another our feelings uh, for you and our feelings for one another. I pray that you would uh, bless us through this evening, dear Heavenly Father, and uh, help us that uh, something that might be said uh, during the course of this evening may uh, be a catalyst for us to uh, spend some time and meditate on your word to, um, you know, to just become uh, better servants in your kingdom. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with our friend Pat as she goes through uh, some issues in her life and help us to be of comfort to her. I pray that you would be with my neighbor Juan's father, Juan Carrasco, as uh, he just got out of the hospital and he is also dealing with some health issues, that you would uh, be with him and uh, just bless him in his recovery. Be with us through the rest of this service. I pray this. In Jesus' most holy name, amen. And if you would, the song before the lesson is number 399. One, two, and four. One, two, and four. <clears throat> Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice soundeth, 
saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the main world's golden store. From each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior, make us hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience, serve and love thee best of all. Okay, thank you for singing with us. We had a little trouble with the third song, but uh, we tried. And uh, our meaning was to praise the Lord. Sometimes it doesn't always come out the way we want it to come out. We've been doing a series of lessons based on a book by Mark and Deborah Laser uh, entitled Seven Desires of Every Heart. Just by way of review, uh, I gave an overview lesson uh, several weeks ago, and uh, then uh, the first lesson, the first desire, was uh, the desire to be heard and understood. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we uh, studied the need or the desire to be affirmed or affirmation. Last week, it was the desire to be touched and to touch others. This week, we are going to uh, get into another field of things within this list of the desires of the heart. And so, uh, this evening, I am going to talk about the desire to be chosen. Okay, the desire to be chosen. I hearken back to my playground days. Uh, before school or during, during uh, a play or recess classes, often uh, the teacher or the person in charge would designate two people to be the captains of the team, and they would choose the players that they wanted on their team. Now, you know, if you were a good player, you usually got chosen at the top of the list. Uh, if you were not such a good player, uh, even though, you know, you maybe wanted to be a better player, you got chosen down at the bottom of the list. It felt good to be chosen first. And the last person chosen maybe felt a little bit bad because it sent a message uh, that uh, maybe I'm taking you because I have to, not because uh, you were one of my choices. In life, we have uh, choices of uh, this, uh, this type. And, uh, you know, any of you, and I'm not in the workforce any longer, but I went to job interviews where I wanted a particular job. And uh, you tried to do your best to prepare for the job interview because you wanted to be the one that was chosen for the job. And so it's easy to see that in a, a very physical nature, um, being chosen for several areas within our physical life, uh, physical positions in life, is important. But I'm going in a different direction this evening. I'm talking about uh, being chosen for a spiritual position. And this is, this is even better than being chosen for a physical position. There are numerous passages, as I research this, uh, about being chosen. Uh, I have chosen, pardon the pun, I have chosen a few of those for you, and uh, I'm going to cover them this evening, and let's see what we can garner from this lesson. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, it says, He chose us, before the foundation of the world. 
I want, I want that to sink in a little bit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 4, Paul writes, The Lord chose you from the beginning. And then if we skip to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4, it says that his choice was of you. Now, there is a thinking out there, a religious thinking, about something called predestination. And on the surface, something like he chose us before the foundation of the world, or you were chosen from the beginning, almost sounds as if God chose us before we were even born. So we were either going to be chosen and be a part of his kingdom and uh, be saved uh, because he predestined this. It's not what these verses actually mean. Because if it was what the verses mean, it would contradict the teachings of the Bible. For example, in Romans chapter 2, verse 11, Paul writes to the Romans and says, there is no partiality with God. And so if God would have predestined who he was going to save, it would make him a liar because this says there is no partiality with God. Now, Peter stated it a, a, a little different way. He, he stated the same truth in uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 34, where he said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one who shows partiality. So if before time, if before the world, um, God had determined already that certain people would go to heaven and certain people would go to hell without either of them doing anything about it. Uh, is that not showing partiality? And so it, it, it kicks this idea of predestination to the curb. So if God determines that without any human action, that some will go to heaven and some won't go to heaven. It contradicts other truths. For example, what Paul wrote to uh, Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. And it says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And so God hasn't predestined some to be saved and some not. This says he wants all to be saved. If God wants all to be saved and he determines who is going to be saved, why does he not just save everyone? Well, because to, to use another kind of athletic analogy, the ball is in our court. We have to desire to be chosen. And Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Conclusion? Uh, when the Bible says that God chooses people, it must not mean that he chooses them directly. It means that he chooses them indirectly. What's that mean? What does choosing indirectly mean? Well, it means that God wants all to be saved. And what he does is, he provides a way for all to be saved. But he lets each person decide whether he or she wants to be obedient and be saved. 
It's like saying, you know, if I look outside of, of my home, I see a street. Now, if I get in my car and I want to go to a certain place, I take that street. And then I turn down another street and I turn down another street, uh, however many it takes to get to my destination. Now, whether I travel or whether I don't travel, the street's still there. It's still providing the way for me to get to where I'm going to go. I have but to get in my car and then put this into action. In other words, what we're saying here is that conditions must be met. Even in passages where God speaks of of choosing and having chosen, there are conditions to be met for God to choose. For example, if we're applying for a job, that person is going to choose you on the basis of how he sees your qualifications. Uh, if he's a good employer and he wants employees that will be good employees, they must uh, have certain qualifications that they must meet for him to be satisfied with them. And so when in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, and I'm going to turn to that because there are some other verses around this that explain it better. It says, Beloved brethren, by God, his choice of you. Now, one's first thought is, ooh, 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 God chose these people to go to heaven. But again, as is important in many scriptures, context is very, very important. And so if we go to verse 5, it says, For our gospel did not come to you by word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we proved among you for your sake. Here I'm holding the Bible. The Bible is the word by which we find how to get chosen. Now, if we go to verse 6, it says, uh, You also became imitators of us, and the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, he said, Here's the word. Go ahead and choose it. And then, skipping down to verse 9, it says, for they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you, that you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. And so the, the bottom line here is that these people, these Thessalonians, made the choice. Yes, God wanted to choose them. It was his idea from the beginning. But we must remember Jesus' very poignant words, and not only poignant, I shouldn't say poignant, actually pointed words in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, where he says, many are called, but few are chosen. He calls to all of us. When he calls us with the gospel message, when the gospel message is preached to us, he wants us to choose. He wants us to choose him, but he lets us decide if we want to be one of his chosen. If we do, we have to be obedient to God's instructions. And so it's true in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13, that God has chosen us from the beginning. But what does that mean? It means before the world was formed, God had his plan. The plan was not to choose everybody before they were born. The plan was to be those who obeyed him were destined to live with him forever. 
those that fill themselves with the knowledge of God's word and came to the understanding of what they had to be to be children of God and to indeed be chosen. He set forth that plan from the very, very beginning. And God said, Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. In the Great Commission, he told the disciples to go into all the world and preach the good news. Now, those who accepted, those who believed and were baptized would be saved. Those who did not believe and were not baptized would not be saved. This was God's plan from the very beginning. And so what he planned was not who would be chosen. What he determined was a plan that each could make their choice so that they would be chosen. And so since this desire to be chosen uh, literally on every level of our life, to uh, you know our our physical life our our physical needs god offers us the greatest blessing of all blessings by blessing us by choosing us to be his people and that choosing comes by our accepting his plan that plan of salvation. In order for us to be called God's children, we must be tender to that plan. If being chosen in the physical realm brings satisfaction, it brings uh, self-worth, how much greater do you think it is when we realize that God wants to choose us. He wants you and I to be his people. He wants you and I to be his children. Now, again, as we have gone through these seven desires of the heart, whether it was desire to be heard and understood, uh, the desire uh, to be affirmed, uh, the desire to be touched. If we want the greatest satisfaction that we can get in life, we must render obedience to the gospel, to the gospel instructions that God has set forth in his word. It, aren't, those, aren't those wonderful thoughts that God is just waiting to usher us into the kingdom if we but follow the way that he has set forth. And, and you know, I believe with every fiber of my being that one of the desires of our hearts is the di desire to be chosen. Christians are God's chosen people. Peter tells us that we are a chosen people. We're a royal priesthood. We're saints called out of the world. Like that song, Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of the wild, life's wild, restless sea. He calls us out of the world into his world. He says, come into my world, be my chosen people. Because one of the basic desires of the heart is to be chosen. And so, as you think about this evening, uh, this this evening, meditate on it. And think about the wonderful blessing that we have in God and through his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, so that we're able to make that choice, so we can fall under the umbrella of God's grace, so that we can have 
forgiveness of sins and be his servants right up until the very end of our lives because God has set forth his plan so that we can be his chosen people. What a wonderful thought. What a wonderful thought to, to have running through your mind when you put your head down on the pillow this evening, that, that God actually has chosen us through his word. Let's just rejoice in that. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, as we continue in this series of the desires of the heart, let's come to understand how important of a desire it is to be chosen, to be among your people, to proudly be named as Christians, to wear that title with, with pride and with dignity, because we've made the decision to do that. We've made the decision to be called out of this world into your glorious light. And we're so grateful for that plan that you had for us from the very, very beginning, that we could be your children. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father, and be with us through this night, be with us uh, through this next week, and help us to understand the great and wonderful blessing that we have to be called children of yours. Be with us, bless us, comfort us, help us to show the love uh, toward one another that we ought to show. I pray this in your son's most holy name. Amen. May God bless you all. Man of sorrows, See you